Before we start tearing apart all these nicer wallets, kind of like we, what we did with the Bellroy wallet, I wanted to do kind of the bottom of the barrel, baseline, $10 wallet, leather wallet that you can get off Amazon so that we have something to compare and contrast so that when people are like, well, why would you spend $100 on a wallet? It just holds cards. You'll understand why, and you'll understand maybe the difference between a $10 leather that's in a wallet versus a leather that's in a $100 wallet. And so I'm gonna show you why you need a nicer wallet if you want it to last longer than six months, or three months, or a few days. So let's cut this thing apart. That was by far the fastest teardown I've ever done. I literally just popped that one stitch and the whole thing came unraveled. And that's kind of one of the bigger issues with like machine sewing versus hand sewing is if, if it's a cheap wallet and it's not constructed the right way, if you pop one stitch, everything just starts coming unraveled and flying apart because you've got a thinner stitching and those stitches inter, interlink. So that's why like if you've, ever, if you've ever popped like a stitch on your shirt or a sweater or whatever, the whole thing just comes unraveled versus hand sewing, it's a far superior way of doing it because you're you're not using the thread for its tension, you're using two threads that are weaving in and out so that it's not dependent on itself for the strength. So let's go through the different parts of it. Um, first thing that you'll see is this RFID blocking material. Um, it actually looks very similar to the Bellroy. I'm not an RFID blocking material expert, but it looks like it's basically the same material. Take that for what it's worth. And then one interesting thing I found inside of here was this uh, like a rubbery material that's on the inside. And I, I think this is what gives the wallet its like leather fill and structure. Instead of using leather like most wallets would, they just stuck a lot of this like rubber stuff on the inside and it's super weak and you know, I can tear it in half super easy. And then we get to like the, the nylon or like the polyester, like the polyester fabric on the inside. This is actually a lot thinner than the one on the Bellroy. It's a lot lower thread count. And then to the leather, there is actually a surprising, surprisingly little amount of leather in this wallet. I thought that there was gonna be some more on the interior and stuff, and then I started ripping into it, and I was like, oh, there's like these two panels of leather, and that's pretty much it. When I first opened this wallet, I thought it might have been a bonded leather, um, but once I got it apart, I started to see some of the fuzzy, natural, uh, flesh side and then I was like, okay, so maybe it is a genuine leather and one really good way to tell if it's a genuine leather or a bonded leather is take a thin piece and just rip it and if you see a lot of those fibers like interlaced and starting to come apart a lot of times it's going to be a real leather but if you see a lot of different colors in there and it's not fibrous and it's just kind of a matted fake material kind of like what was in that uh, the belt that we tore apart the $10 belt from Amazon then it's gonna be a bonded leather. Or like on that journal we looked at, it had a lot of the, the different colored particles in there. That's an indicator of the bonded leather. If we look at the thickness of this leather, it's just about one millimeter when you are in the middle piece there, but when you're on the edge piece that wraps around, you're about 0.4 millimeter. So that's another reason why this wallet's gonna come apart versus if we look at like one of my wallets or Versus if we look at like this, the Bellroy wallet, the Bellroy wallet was one millimeter basically all the way around. And even in the parts that were wrapped around, it was still 0.5 millimeters. And I'm pretty sure the Bellroy is a full grain leather. So you've got the strength of that grain holding it together versus this wallet. You don't have that tight packed grain pattern to hold its structure and to prevent the threads from ripping through. So like on our Claude wallet, you know, we use anywhere between 1.5 millimeter to two millimeter, just depending on the height and, and where on the height it comes from. So you're gonna get 
you know, four times the thickness of leather from a handmade wallet. So overall, you just kind of get what you pay for when it comes to these leather products. You know, you're not gonna get a nice leather, you're not gonna get a well-structured wallet, you're not gonna get a well-sewn or well-glued wallet. You basically just get what you pay for and it is full of a bunch of rubber and polyester and cheap materials. You know, if you've got the money to spend on a nicer wallet, um, a handmade wallet or like a Bellroy wallet is gonna last you 10 times as long. You're gonna get your money's worth out of it in the long run if you're not needing to switch wallets every time. And you know, when it comes down to it, it's even better for the environment. You're not filling your wallets full of rubber and, and nylon that's gonna wear out in a few months and then six months from then it's gonna be in a landfill versus like a handmade full leather wallet. This thing should last you the rest of your life and it shouldn't ever go in the landfill. So yeah, you get what you pay for, and this should give us a good baseline to go off of moving forward so that we can compare some of the other people who make handmade wallets, some of the other companies who make more of the mass-produced wallets, and help show you guys kind of where that value comes from and where that price comes from, because I think it's important to know what you're buying and why you're buying and what you're getting for your money. So. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment, and let me know, you know what your experiences are with a cheap wallet and how it's gone for you. And um, this has been a really fun thing to do in the last few months. So um, yeah, thank you guys. See ya.